Good morning, Meep! I hope you're ready because today's gonna be a cool day. We are going to try to do some rocket ranching. So that's gonna be with these little robo slicksters over here. You see how they're cramped up? They need more space. And they need more carbon dioxide. That's why we've built up all of these rockets over here in an enclosed silo so that we can build up huge amounts of carbon dioxide. Look at all of this. We have 19 kilograms per tile right there. And the temperature on that is actually kind of colder than I want it to be. So, what I've done here between the last video and this one is I've built up several of these thermoelectric generators right on over here, and that handles the heat that's coming off of these rockets. Now, normally it would take quite a bit more of these if we were dealing with steam. However, the big deal here is that since we're dealing with carbon dioxide, we don't have as much thermal energy to handle. So, if you look at the specific heat capacity, we have 0.8 per gram as compared to steam, which is 4.1 per gram. And this is made a little bit more clear if we use the temperature overlay with that mod that we uh, showed you last time here. So looking at 23.4 kilograms worth of carbon dioxide, you can see that the total amount of heat energy down there is actually 11.8 million DTUs. And then if we look at a spot that's really similar with steam, we're talking about 48 million DTUs. So there's a ton more thermal energy in steam as compared to carbon dioxide. So with that in mind, we can handle the heat without much problem at all. All right, so here's how this strategy is gonna work here. I have all of this carbon dioxide that's being put out by all of these rockets over here. So we have different rockets, they're all running petroleum, therefore they give off a ton of carbon dioxide every time they launch out. These rockets are just visiting the nearest carbon asteroids over here. So really all I'm looking for is fullerene, isoresin, and then niobium, which I'm getting all from these, just these two little carbon asteroid spots, which is perfect actually, pretty easy to do. That gives me my huge source of carbon dioxide that I really want to feed all of my slicksters. I'm then going to automate the thermoelectric generator so that the gas doesn't get too cold. At that point, we're going to take all of the carbon dioxide into this pipe and then pipe it into several ranches. And that's full of robo slicksters. So essentially what this means is that every time we fire off a rocket, all of this carbon dioxide is going to be converted into steel. Now, as far as my ranching design, I would love to go with this little design down here, but unfortunately, this really isn't gonna work out too well. So I need to come up with a good ranching system here that's going to work at a very high temperature because these robo slicksters like it hot. Matter of fact, if we take a closer look at this right here, you can see that the temperatures that they are comfortable in is anywhere from 250 to 470 degrees Celsius. The livable range is a little bit wider right there, but they're hot. Matter of fact, they're quite a bit hotter than what we have up here, which has caused some issues for our normal slicksters because they keep getting cooked to death. Poor guys. But I hope to transplant these little guys from up here all the way down to several ranches down here below. Now, if we did want to make our rocket self-powering, we could actually use molten slicksters as well, converting that carbon dioxide into petroleum, which could then obviously act as fuel for the rockets. And if we needed to, we could actually take some of that petroleum run it through a generator and then get the water out of that, convert it back into oxygen and all that fun stuff. However, we really don't need to do that. So I'm not gonna worry about all of that. Besides, we're already getting power out of this from the thermoelectric things here. All right, so first things first, I need to get this automation set up here. So I'm just gonna set it up just like this. Once I kind of get the bridges built and all that fun stuff, and that is going to go right in here like this. This way I can say, you know, if this goes below 300 degrees Celsius, we turn it off. That way it doesn't get too cold. I suppose I want to do the same sort of thing right down here. All right, so looking at my available space, I've got a lot of it here. So let's see if we can line up a 96 zone that's kind of tall, but not too wide. Oh yes, six by 16 would be absolutely perfect. So that'll start from three tiles up and then all the way to the left. I love how the dupes run on the asphalt tiles. Every once in a while, you'll see them, they just take really big steps instead of like, a bunch of little steps that are happening happening fast. I don't know why I like that so much, but <laughs> here's the other thing. We can make all of this out of ceramic. Look at this. I have 28 tons of it. I've had a, a little bit of amount of time here just to play while I've been dealing with my account issues, which obviously if you're watching this video has been resolved, hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know how you're watching it. Hopefully I haven't had to resort to uploading it somewhere else. Ugh. Anyhow, we're back at it. There is one question that a lot of people, you know, give me all the time, and that is, are you burnt out on oxygen not included? And I can tell you that since I've actually been able to spend some time playing this game, and just, I still really enjoy playing this game. It's still my favorite game of all time. Although I would say playing it, and playing it in such a way where I'm not trying to make a video, 
is a fair bit more relaxing because I'm I, I like to play the game slow. Does that make sense? Is that normal? Like I play the game at normal speed as compared to playing it at 3x speed all the time. I guess it's just because I'm not trying to make a video. I don't know. Interesting though. So the goal here is to go 6 by 16, 96 total, just like that. And yes, we'll insulate this up. Man, that's a lot of ceramic. <laughs> Do we really need to build this out of ceramic? Mm, yes. Yes. I almost had a sane thought there for a moment. That's not good. Although I suppose that the tiles that go in between the different chambers really don't need to be insulated. Mm. Rather, we'll make them out of diamond. That way they can see each other. There you go. Now, as far as the ladders, we're gonna need to build a bunch of those. We've got obsidian all over the place down here. Let's just go ahead and do this number. Use the best tool ever, and that's going to be the blueprint tool. Take this, slap it down just like that, slap it down. Oh yes, that's going to be many slicksters. Ooh, can I go one more? I can. Okay, so one of my biggest problems here is the temperature. Uh, conveyor loaders made out of steel actually have an issue. But now that I've got uh, thermium, that's not gonna be a problem anymore. So, good deal. Uh, the one thing I haven't been able to create more of is tungsten. If you have some good ideas of how to make more tungsten, then leave that in the comment section below because I'd actually like to try that. I'm trying to think how could I possibly melt insulation because that's essentially what we'd end up doing here. Like we go into this spot, you make some insulation, which is this one right here. It comes from iso resin and abyssalite. And if you can melt down either of those, you can actually get tungsten out of it. I haven't figured out exactly how I want to do that though. Now we're definitely going to need some cool decorations over here. So I've got one of these things, which obviously you can't see just yet. <laughs> But I'm gonna try to place this down in the background to give them a little bit of inspiration. There you go, there you go, there's a little bit more. It's a little bit more. Ooh, does it fit? It might almost fit. What if I do this number, just like that? And then I copy all of this. Hmm? Rex, are you stuck again? Seriously? <sighs> and look at that, you're even happy about it. Come on, Rex. All right, let's see how that works. Maybe it'll Maybe it'll work. Okay, I'm just about to the point of having the second rocket up and running. Let's see here, what am I missing? Liquid? I think I'm just missing liquid. We'll add some petroleum, there we go. I should have all the oxygen I need in the line. Perfect, look at all that oxalite. Uh, I set that to the wrong number, 340, there you go. But now we need an astronaut. Zach, jump aboard. Ooh, you know what, we do need some more duplicates because we are losing a few of them to the rockets here. So, let's go ahead and find one of those. Who do we have? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Farts frequently. Automatic DQ. Sorry. Wow, you really like to cook, don't you? <laughs> Stress reaction. Binge eater. This all makes a lot of sense right here. And your name is going to be Xenoclast. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter and welcome to the base. Let me go ahead and put you on the night crew over here. And clearly, since you like cooking so much, we're gonna make you a chef. Oh man, look at all these dupes. I've yet to reset everybody, but there are a few that I could reset. <laughs> there you go, cooking. Let's just take a quick look at some of these dupes. Oh my. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good dupe. Wow, okay. We have a lot of ranching that we need to do here, so. Oh, you know, you probably should be a pilot. Rex, you keep getting stuck all the time, so we're gonna work on your intelligence here. There you go. And you know what, Valkyrie, you love to cook and build. So I think we're gonna have you doing that instead of cooking. I, mean, I think we got a new chef now. There goes one rocket. And the only thing I'm missing over here is a little bit of an automation signal. So that should be true right there. Okay, there we go. That rocket will fire off here at any moment. And what I'm going to do is tie in this rocket it's gonna look at the extra one right there. Send that signal back down. And there we go, so that should be set. Missing Atmo suit. No! Hmm, it looks like I might have taken on a little bit too much oxalite as well. Okay, there we go. Let's head on over here and build ourselves another exosuit. Whoa, look at all those dupes. There we go. We've got our Atmo suit. Vandal's bringing it over. Man, you got a long ways to go. Dude, seriously, why did you go that way? 
We have all of those fast tiles down there. There's no way that was faster. Oh, well. There we go. Now we're ready to launch. Goodbye. So now we've got two rockets down here. Ooh, look at all of that sweet carbon dioxide. So, all right, so if we pause this for a moment, you can see clearly how these rockets work. And it works the same for steam as it does for carbon dioxide here. Every other tile up, you can see that it gives off a puff of 10 kilograms of whatever it is they are expelling. In this case, carbon dioxide. Otherwise, it would be steam. But you know what? Makes me think if you had a steam engine with boosters, you could get carbon dioxide and steam out of the same rocket. Hmm. Anyhow, you can see that that's 10 kilograms right there, and the temperature is really, really hot, 1,380 some degrees Celsius. And if we catch it at just the right spot, yes, you can see it right there. Look at how hot that is. This overlay is really cool because it shows you a different color for the pressures here. So when we're below 10 kilograms, it's darker, but then it's a little bit more red when you're closer than that. So neat. That's how it works. So I've set the automation here for all of these to be only operational when the temperature is above 300 degrees Celsius. And right now it isn't, so we don't have to worry about that. So now the next thing I need to do is bring in this carbon dioxide over here and dump it into these chambers. So because we're extra fancy here, I'm going to use insulated Mafic. Hmm, and we do want to have a nice even distribution. How many chambers do we have? One, two, three. All right, so we've got six down here which means we could definitely do this number. All right, so yes, the gas comes over here, it splits two ways, then it splits three ways. Beautiful spaghetti. Perfect. Let's take a look at the pressure down here. This thing's been running for a while. Ooh, look at that. 2,000 some kilograms. It really isn't the same everywhere you look, but look at that, 6,000. How much water do you have there? Hmm, eh, pretty much just a normal tile's worth. Whoa, that is 19,000 kilograms. If you open this mechanized airlock, this whole area would just fill with crude oil. Hmm, that could be fun. Hey, we got some more Paku. Welcome to the base, buds. Flop on over here to the left. There they go, they figured it out. <laughs> I just realized we have 24 duplicates in this base, but only one shower. This thing must be in constant use. Or we got some stinky dupes. Hmm, that might be it. Is there any spot to put an extra shower? Ooh, I don't know about that. I mean, I suppose I could just use the hot tub. Isn't that right, Ebenezer? Mm-hmm. Hey, the rocket's back. And just so you're wondering, yes, it does the exact same thing on the way back. Check out all of that carbon dioxide. So you win on the way out and you win on the way back. And that's why. <laughs> Look at all of this, 20 kilograms per tile. I think I might need more pumps than this. I mean, the biggest struggle of this might be that I can't actually pump enough carbon dioxide from the right to the left. But luckily, there's room to really expand it on these tiles right here if I really wanted to. If I aim these down, just like that, then we don't have to worry about the liquids. We can actually just pick up the gas. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> and now the rocket's already ready to go again. This turnaround time for this rocket is ridiculous. I don't even know if the doors close. Who? Mahong! You got lucky, bud. This poor Draco. Sorry, bud. Tough life, I know. Hmm. 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 You know, now that we've got this saltwater geyser, I should be able to pump that salt water all the way up here, and then we can grow lettuce. If I planted some of those right here. Even better, this thing doesn't even want an atmosphere. How about that? Temperature we need to work on, though, is going to be 50 or 60 degrees. Oh, gosh. Who built this monster? This is above 80. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That'll drop the temperature down. Kind of get rid of some of that heat in here. Perfect. However, that doesn't mean I need to pipe in liquid all the way over here. Oh boy. I know you got a lot to build, dupes. But hey, if you got a little spare time, Rex, maybe you can pipe some of this salt water over there. Here we go. We can do something like this. That will dig out. Ha ha. Perfect. All right, so what this is going to do right down here is it's just gonna make sure that this thing stays uncovered. There is a mod to get a little robo digger that'll actually undig itself if it gets trapped. But you know what, the game's running pretty good right now, so I'm gonna stick with it. Steel. Bam. Yeah, probably looking at steel over here at this point. 
Ooh, that's a lot of steel. But then again, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about steel in a little bit. But do I really wanna spend that much on just a wire? Eh, maybe one wire. Ooh, expensive. Who made a mess? Oh no, meep, meep, you got stuck. How am I gonna get you out of this one? Oh, here we go. Bye-bye, dope. <sighs> now you're real stuck. Party level, please. You're getting closer to freedom, mate. There you go. And you're free. Oh, just like that, we've got ourselves more spicy tofu. I actually selected it to be placed on this pedestal, so the game read my brain again. All right, so I'm going to need a grooming station in each one of these spots. It should be fairly easy in that I don't think they have overheat temperatures, they just melt. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put one right down here, just like that. And then a critter drop off over here. Now this one is a little bit different in that it does have an overheat temperature thing, so gotta be careful. <laughs> We're actually gonna have to make this out of thermium. <laughs> I mean, we could use niobium, but uh, which would actually be a little bit cheaper because then I don't use tungsten. So just to save ourselves a little bit of tungsten, I'm just gonna go with niobium. And that would be a better choice for this battery. Then again, I guess I don't really need that battery. Oh, you know what? I can make a cheaper high temperature battery. Oh, check this out. Because if I make it out of diamond, I have plus 200. And then if I make it out of gold, that's plus 500, plus the 75 on top of that. Or if I make that out of steel, then, you know, you get all of that together. No astronaut assigned. What's this game? No astronaut assigned. Assigned to Zek TG. Where are you at, dude? What? You're sleeping on the job. You're supposed to be running the rocket, dude. Zach, I can see you. I can, I still know you're there, man. Can't hide behind that door. Idle. <laughs> Zach, dude. Why is everybody idle? They're all idle. Oh, oxygen. I mean, I'm giving it all she's got. <laughs> Seriously, look at all this oxygen I have going on here. It's just insane. Okay, so this one kind of splits off here. I could possibly take this and bring it in over here. I'm just gonna do some more spaghetti in. All right, I have no idea if this is actually gonna work, but we're gonna try it here. If I bring the oxygen in over here like this and then drop it down here where this suit is, maybe the oxygen will understand that it can go down and then wants to go to the left. Although I have my doubts. I think I'm better off if I do this number right here. That way it knows it wants to go left. Or maybe the uh, best idea is to do this number. Yeah, that's probably better off. And then I'll take this and go down here like that, and then up from there, and then snip the oxygen right here. Clearly, good strategy. Hmm. All right, oxygen plan. Ooh, yes, it does look like it's working. Oxygen's flowing in over here like this. Maybe eventually one day it will fill up and go to the left, or it'll go over here, but it only does this if this is backed up. Aha, so much strategy. <laughs> Otherwise, the pipe flows up over here, over here, over here, into this, and to do all that. And the one thing we're not doing is growing any water weed at all. I guess that's just low on the list of priorities at the moment here. What I really want to see is Zek finally get with it and start running this rocket. What are you doing, Zek? You're too busy tidying. Is that it? <sighs> I had to reset it for whatever reason. There you go. Uh, just so you, in case you're wondering, the materials that come out of this rocket will actually go right down here and combine in with this rocket here, which then drops off of this chute, which I'm actually going to get rid of because the chute will be over here. Mm, which I guess at this point will now actually, eventually, once I actually get to it, uh, will connect over here on the left so I can get rid of this chute as well. And then so I get the right stuff out, what I'm going to do is just put in a couple of conveyor filters right up here. Oh, and you know what? I can actually kind of stack this thing. Oh, that's cool. So then this line, as it's moving back towards the base, will actually go through here, and then we'll kind of filter out the rail. So it'll go in over here, up, and then up, and then over, and out. So I'm gonna move that right up there, snip and cancel all of that, and then I just bring this straight down here like this. You know what? I don't need a bunch of these. I don't know why I picked all of them. Oh, is, is it true that they can only do one? No, they can do all of organic. What am I doing here? Here. Here's a much easier way to do this. <laughs> we bring that out right over there. Then we just go up and back over to the right. 
So just like this. We already have everything we need right there, so easy. All right, so what I've done here is I've set the conveyor filter to tungsten, niobium, isoresin, and fullerene. So all of those will actually be filtered out and dropped over here on the left. That is once my dupes get around to finishing it. Dupes! Oh man, what a mess. <laughs> Snippy snip. <sighs> Best tool ever. Okay, right there with the copy tool. It's a pretty even battle. I get rid of this, build that up. Priority level nine, which means this, whenever this rocket comes back, it should be automatically filtered. Haha. -ha. Ooh, have we built up all of these spots? We have. I didn't even notice. All right, so for slicksters, I want to bring in robo slicksters. The real question is, we want robo slickster. We can even go with the larvas, that is fine. But at what priority do we want to move them over there? Oh, you know what? We're not even sweeping them up up here. That's what I need to do. I need to build uh, another one of these drop-offs, but I need to build it up here. So that needs to be built out of niobium once the dupe gets around to being up here. This is fun. Who thought we'd ever need a niobium critter drop-off? Niobium thought so. Ah. Uh, how many do I have? Ooh, I only have four in there? Max seven. Auto wrangle surplus. Critter eggs. Are we hatching up new robo slicksters? We should be, except we're not. So let's do that. And you know what? If there's anything we can get rid of here, I don't think we need a hatchling egg <laughs> or any of these hatches at the moment. All right, so we'll get our robo slicksters out of here and then we'll auto wrangle them up and move them somewhere. So this is gonna be the drop off for robo slicksters up here. We're gonna make that an eight. So all of these are going to be sevens. There we go. Seven all the way across. And we want very happy slicksters, so here we go. Ooh, how's the shipping system working? Oh, look at that. We even have a little ISO resin right down there. Perfect. Very nice. We go to sweep this stuff up. Are they gonna just put it right down here? They should. Where are you going, Lucy? Well, I mean, that was close. <laughs> Thanks, Radar. All right, I guess it's time to show off my artwork here. Let's go ahead and set this to priority level nine and get that sweet background tiles built up. Hey, we've got our first little slickster down here. How you doing? Ooh, the temps over here are not that great. That's only 105. Um, we're gonna go with zero. Trying to move you from there to here. Otherwise, I think you're gonna end up getting a little bit too cold. Mm. Rocket's back again. All right, so in case you're wondering, I tried to make a little bit of a slickster over here in the background tiles. Kinda ended up over some window tiles, so it looks a bit weird, but eh, it's kinda cool. I think if I get rid of these ladders, it might look a little bit better. Let's see what temperatures we're actually pulling in here. So that's at 380 degrees Celsius, nice and hot. And then the gas, yeah, that's still over 300 degrees. That'll be plenty hot. Although that's only at 200 grams. So I think only the top pump is really running. I'm gonna have to do the whole bridge technique thing. I still have yet to use the whole splitter. I guess I could do that. Mm. There we go. Now we're moving one kilogram packets. Perfect. Mmm, but you know what? If this gets a little steam in it, it might just get stuck. Oh boy. The spaghetti's becoming more spaghetti. -y. Yeah, see this gas pipe contains a little bit of oxygen. <laughs> oh, of course you do. All right, get out of here, gas pipes. I didn't want you anyhow. Okay, plan B. We're just gonna do this number. Oh no! He died! Oh no, don't tell me he's not... What? How? The temperature's great down here. Oh no, maybe it just isn't hot enough yet. Oh my gosh, am I really gonna have to put heaters down there just to keep the little dude alive? Yeah, there we go, that doesn't look half bad. Kinda cool. I think they could use some lights down here though. If we were to actually show this, there would be absolutely no lights. Although they might need more than lights, they might need heaters. Let's give them that first. Mm, utility is right. Super industrial heater, overheat temperature, very, very high, that'll work. Boom, boom. So we're taking the power out over here to heat up this suit. It's kind of a weird thing that's going on, isn't it? Temperature wise though, 180 something, 150. Yeah, it's not even close to hot enough over here. <laughs> We're running multiple rockets, but yet it's still not, not enough heat. Above 400 then. 
Now this works out great. Okay, perfect. All right, I've set up the automation down here. This is going to run if it's below 300. Man, this is... My base is pulling a lot of power at this point. <laughs> Pretty much all of those are running. Okay. Cold damage? What is... What am I pumping through there? Oh, hold up. Phosphorus gas? Man, what are you doing over here, phosphorus? You messing up everything. How'd you even end up over there? Am I really gonna have to go up there and try to repair all that? I just got rid of the lab. My right, gross. There's like 22 kilograms of it right here. <laughs> it's just trapped. Here, maybe I can let it out in that spot. And then I don't have to worry about my pipes constantly exploding. Oh, gosh. Oh, here we go again, dupes. I thought we were done. Sorry. Priority, please! Who gets the job? Xenoclast. Of course! Why is it that the double exclamation marks always end up with the newest dupe to the base? All right, Phosphorus. I will you to go right. Go right. I know you want to. I know you want to. Oh, come on. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Now go up. You're free. You're free. Thank you. I'm the Gas Whisperer. Not really a name I wanted. All right, priority level now. Yeah, look at that overheat temperature on the battery. 1,175 degrees. Perfect. Now let's see if these rockets stay in synchronized motion right there. The one down below does have to travel a little bit further. However, it does get first dibs on offloading material. So maybe that gives it just enough advantage to where it will launch first. Oh, they do. They go back and forth. Interesting. Interesting. Nope. The top one's going to go faster. <laughs> There's so much carbon dioxide over here. Okay, so what are the temp- Oh no! No, my slicksters are melting! Well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that. Well then. I'm gonna have to go to class and explain that I did do my homework assignment. I made my wallpaper. It melted. Some things just can't be helped. You're my last hope, slickster. Keep it cool. I'm gonna build more. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Hold up, hold up. If you melt the background tile and it turns... Hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh. 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 Drywall can do the exact same thing, but it is 400 kilograms. What can we make drywall out of? Sandstone, igneous rock, granite, sedimentary. Oh, you can make tiles that way, couldn't you? Hmm, that one's kind of hot. Coal, that was actually a fun discovery right there. We can make coal tiles and you can actually grow things wildly on coal tiles if you really wanted to. That's actually refined carbon. Hmm. See, that's at 276 degrees. Huh, that's pretty fancy. I think we stumbled across a way to make tiles. But then again, it is using a mod, so you can kind of just download the mod that lets you build tiles out of dirt and stuff. But hey, are you serious? We have more cold damage? Ugh. Where? How dare you? You're coming in through this door or something, aren't you? Phosphorus. Gosh. Okay, we're just gonna lock all these doors. Maybe a dupe runs through there and that's where the phosphorus comes in. I don't know. We just have a little bit of it right there. No, Slickster, you're melting. No. All right, so how are we doing up here? We're up to five. <gasps> you found a way out, Draco. Congratulations, bud. It took you a while, but you eventually did it. All right, so we built up a ton of ranches down here for our robo slicksters, and we are pressurizing it with tons and tons of carbon dioxide at a relatively high temperature. This is all over 300 degrees Celsius now. So at this point, I'm just waiting for more robo slicksters, but mm, they're not here yet. This little clip here from the future shows that this little design does work out, and it's pretty awesome. It's actually converting a lot of carbon dioxide into steel while providing a little bit of food. Very nice. Oh. Air. <laughs> I guess that's the sign from the game telling me that it's time to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Hopefully we'll populate this really soon here and turn all of our carbon dioxide into steel. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.
out. Ooh, that's a big crash. It isn't even letting me unpause it. Uh-oh. 